What's up, family? My name's Brittany, and I'm a servant here at New Hope Las Vegas. I just wanted to thank those who are joining us in person and online. For those of you online, leave a comment and let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, we do have a lot of announcements, so let's get straight to it. Your comeback doesn't always have to be from a setback, but it could mean you're coming back from the old. See, your first step is when you say yes to Jesus. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is a private work on the inside of your heart. But when you get water baptized, it's a public work. It's a public working of your faith. In the Greek, baptism is the word baptizo, which means to be immersed. In other words, when you go down into the waters of baptism, you go down fully. You become fully immersed under the water. Prove by the way you live that you have turned to God so that when people see us, they see Jesus. When we rise out of the waters of baptism, we are rising up a new person. We are rising up to a new comeback. The old has passed away and the new has now risen. When you get water baptized, you are making a public declaration that God is doing a private work on the inside. We dunk you, submerge you, baptizo you, immerse you under the waters of baptism. And when you're water baptized, you are following Jesus' example. It is symbolizing Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and identifying yourself with Christ. You might look the same on the outside when you come out of the waters of baptism, but on the inside, you're different.
is speaking to this generation very loud and very clear. And he's telling you, young men, young women, your generation will establish the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven like any other generation before in the history of mankind. Your generation is called to do that. Well, that was all of our announcements. But if you missed it, no worries. You can always go on our website, on our app, or on any of our social media platforms. Now let's get ready to praise and worship. Everybody up on their feet, and let's get ready to glorify his name. In three, two, one. Good morning, New Hope. Come on, are you guys ready to worship today? He's here, he's present, and he's ready for our worship. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give him some praise this morning. He is worthy of all of our praise, so we worship him. Hallelujah. Hey, would you help me pray today, servants? Father God, we worship your name today, Father God. We declare that your name is above every other name, so we give you the glory. We worship you, Father God. You are worthy of all of our praise, Father God. Be the center of this service today. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forever, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Blessed be the name. Come on, we sing. He's all powerful. Come on. Come on. Come on. So we say your name. Your name is provider. Your name is deliverer. Come on, it's Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, your name is above every other name. So we see. Come on. Come on, the name. Come on, let's sing it up. Hey, he's all powerful. He's all wonderful. So we worship you today. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. So we sing. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. So we say, Hallelujah, Lord, we praise your name. Come on, lift up your praise. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless your name. Sing Hallelujah, Lord, we praise your name. I'm 
to say your name is awesome, God. A shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to worship him. Thank you, Father. Come on, lift it up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So worthy of it all, Lord. And we acknowledge you. We believe, Father God. We stand in faith, Lord Jesus, that your name is healer. Your name is provider. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning for allowing and preparing a place for us, Father, to worship you, for seeing purpose in us, Lord. Lord, we are nothing apart from your spirit, Father. So we ask, Lord, that you go before us, Father. You lead the way, Lord Jesus, and we follow you in faith, Lord. Our hope is in you, our trust is in you, Father God. We can make plans, we can prepare things, but how many of you believe that many are the plans of our heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail, hallelujah. It is the Lord who ordains our steps, amen. We thank you, Jesus. You are our safe place, Lord. Come on, so right where you are, lift your worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. So worthy end. We exalt you, Father. We exalt you, Lord. We worship at your feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. You've called me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. But there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you
down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Come on, can we sing set of fire? Set of fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Come on, let that be your declaration. Let that be the prayer of your heart. Hallelujah. Sing set. lift your worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We declare that you are mine. We thank you, Father, that your fire consumes us, your love consumes us, Lord. So, Father, as we worship you and magnify your name right now, Lord, I pray that your spirit fall afresh on your people this morning. Lord, we will not go unless you go before us. We will not move unless you tell us to. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill this room right now. Could we just lift up worship in this room? Let's lift up worship in this room. 
Father, this is our prayer today, to set a fire within our soul. Because we know that your fire purifies us and makes us righteous. This is our prayer, Lord. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. We pray to you, Father. Let's worship him today. your fire to rain down, Lord, to purify your people, Lord, 
We thank you that your love comes down like a fire and consumes us and consumes us, Lord. So, Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your unconditional and agape love, Lord God, that we, don't, we can't earn it, Lord God. There's nothing we can do, Lord, to earn it, Father, but you give it freely. So, Father, let your love like fire fall afresh on your people today. For we declare that love has won it all for us. We lift our hands and we open our hearts and we declare this. Your love won it all. Your love won it all for me. For me. Your love won it all. Your love won it all for me. Love like fire. Your love won it all. Come on, make that declaration. Make that declaration. His love has won it for you. Make that declaration. Your love won it. Because you first loved us. We thank you, Lord, that your love covers the multitude of sins. And because of that, Lord, my past does not define who I am. But Lord, we can come in your presence and you wash us white as snow. And Father, we leave everything that we walked in with at the altar to die at the altar. For your love has made us new. Your love has redeemed us. Your love has refreshed us. Your love brings revival. Your love restores. Your love heals. Your love casts out all sin and evil. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love that covers us. So with every hand lifted and every heart open, we receive your love right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift up the word that you have prepared for our hearts today. We thank you, Lord, for the messenger. We thank you, Lord, that the word you have already prepared beforehand, Lord, and you have planted in your messenger today, Father. We pray that you go before him, that you speak for him, Lord God, that we hear of you, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that it become effortless because it's all of you and none of him, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice of your servant to sit at your feet 
to prepare the word so that we may drink of your cup. Lord, we thank you for this time. Bless this sanctuary, every wall, every corner, every door, every window. I pray, Lord God, that you fall afresh on those who are at home tuning in as well. Lord, we welcome your spirit in this place. Not to tolerate you, but to celebrate you. We need you, we want you, and we love you. We thank you, Father. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, we all say, amen and amen. Amen, Hallelujah. amen. Thank you, worship team. Can we just give it up for them one more time? Well, what's up, New Hope Las Vegas? You may be seated. If you are joining us online, thank you so much for tuning in this Sunday and making New Hope Las Vegas your church. What's up, everyone? Happy summertime is coming. Are you guys excited? Well, if you guys like to give online, or for those of you that like to use your phones, there is a QR code located in the seat pocket in front of you. Go ahead and scan your phones, and it's going to take you to our giving link portal. I have a few announcements for you guys today. One, if you are taking that next step of faith to get water baptized, there is still signups happening online, or you can visit our connections counter. Water baptism is happening on May 15th at 11.45 a.m. So go ahead, bring your friends, bring your family, make that public declaration that you are going to get water baptized before the Lord. Amen. Next, our UFC ukulele for Christ ministry is kicking off with their signups on May 8th. So I don't care if you're young or old, signups are available for all of you ages 8 and older. So come on, join the UFC. You can also visit them online or in the connections counter for more information. So come pick up a new skill of playing an instrument for the Lord. Now, my next announcement really excites me because our missions team is not just evangelizing in the city of Las Vegas, but the doors have opened. They will be going to Mexico and Los Angeles. So if you are interested in going on a mission trip for your ex-missions member, let me tell you something. The mission is not where you're going, but the mission is you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so sign up, go ahead and grow in Christ, go ahead and pray for people out there and just get to see what it's like to evangelize to the world, amen, like Jesus calls us to do. Lastly, women, I have the best news ever. Like I could take a deep breath just saying this. If you're busy at home, you got kids crawling on you, you got your spouse telling you to make breakfast, lunch, dinner, lunch for work, you gotta clean, you gotta do laundry, I have great news. Tell them, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, because I'm building boundaries. There is a Women of Hope event called Building Boundaries coming up on May 21st. So let everybody around you know, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, because I'm setting some boundaries. I need some me time, amen? <laughs> That's all the announcements I have for you guys. If you guys can stretch forth your hands as we pray for our tithes and offerings. Dear Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for waking us up and putting breath in our lungs, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the year that we're still going strong, Father God, believing in you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you drench this place, that you drench our hearts and our homes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we get to give back to you, Father, because we love you, Lord. We honor you and we praise you, Lord. We put you at the center of it all, Lord. So we ask, Lord, that you multiply everything, Lord, that you give us, Lord. Everything that is for your kingdom. We love you and we praise you. All of God's children say amen. Well, I have the honor and pleasure of introducing our speaker for today, our head pastor, Pastor Ken Miyoshi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us online. Would you all stand? Praise the Lord. Would you give it up to our worship team? Praise God. Wow, you guys sounded awesome. You folks ready? You guys ready? This side is ready. This side. You guys ready? Yeah, you guys are really ready. You guys ready? 
Okay, all right. Raise up your Bibles in the air. We're going to declare our faith together as a church family. On the count of three. One, two, three. God is who He says He is. God can do what He says He can do. I am who God says I am. I can do all things through Christ. And God's Word is alive and active in me. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Everybody, everybody say on board. On board. All right. Amen. I love uh, riding trains. My, my family and I, sometimes when we go to Disneyland, we, we normally ride the train right there. And there's a conductor before the train takes off. The conductor would say, all aboard. Here's the question. Are you on board with God? This morning, I want to talk to you about staying on track because God wants to take your life to places that will amaze you, will surprise you. He's got blessings ahead of you. And God's going to put you on a track that if you would follow his track, you're going to experience the blessings of God in every, every area of your life, whether it's in your marriage, your finances, your health. Some of us, we started on, on, on the right track at the beginning of the year. But this is going to be a check on whether or not you're still on the right track. Because normally during the year, we sometimes we get off track. And so this message is to kind of uh, nudge you and to get you to uh, reflect on whether or not, are you still on track with God? In the areas that you were saying, God, I need to get on track with this. I got to get back on track. So today we're going to talk about staying on track. Is that all right with you? Yeah. yeah, staying on track. Because one of the keys to reaching your destination, one of the keys to experiencing the blessings, the promises that God has for you is your ability to stay on track with God. And many times we, we sometimes we go off track. And I think that's why Moses, when he instructed the people of Israel, he said this in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 33. He said, stay on the path. Everybody say, stay on the path. Stay on the path. Yeah. That the Lord God has commanded you to follow. Notice that he didn't say, stay on the path that somebody else told you to follow. You yourself. No, it's, it says, that the Lord God had commanded you to follow. It's not an option. It's not a suggestion. It was, it's a command. God is saying, stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. But first, here it is, part of staying on track is, number one, you need to know where you are. You need to know where you are. In Hawaii... We would ask the question, hey, where you stay? And I don't know about you, but one time I got stuck on the side of the road with a flat tire. And uh, you know how you call it uh, AAA or something? And you ask for help. The thing that they ask you is, where are you? And it's funny because in Genesis, God himself asks Adam that question. Here it is. Then the Lord God called the man, to the man and said to him, Where are you? Where you stay? Now catch this. God knew where Adam was. God didn't misplace Adam. He didn't lose Adam. But when God asked that question, what he was really saying is this. I know where you are. Adam, do you know where you are? God knows where we're at. But the question is, do you know where you're at? See, Adam, when I read this, Adam was still in the garden when God asked the question. So in Adam's perspective, he didn't move outside of the garden. He didn't move outside of necessarily God's uh, domain or God's will. He was in the Garden of Eden. The word Eden means delight or pleasure. So Adam was still in the Garden of God's delight, 
in the garden of God's pleasure. He was still in that place where there, God had provided. So think of it this way. Adam was still in the right place, but God asked Adam, where are you in the garden? How many of us know that we can be in church but not know where we're at? We can be in God's pleasure, God's delight, but sometimes we can get lost in the garden. We can get lost in church. In fact, if you read further on, the Bible says that Adam and Eve hid themselves. How many of us know people that are hiding in church? See, Adam went a little bit off track because he took the fruit, which kind of uh, shifted him off track with God. So we can be in the garden of Eden, the garden of his delight. We can be in church, and still we can be off track in relationship to God. So the question is, where are you in relationship to your God? Where are you in your God-given assignment here on earth? Where are you in your call? Where are you in your dream? Where are you in the garden? See, it's important to know where you are. That's part of staying on track with God. The other question is, you need to know where you're going. So the first part is, you need to know where you are. The second is, you need to know where you're going. In Lewis and Clark's Alice in Wonderland, in Disney's Alice in Wonderland, a young girl named Alice is on a journey. And some of us, were familiar with the story, where Alice, as she's journeying, she encounters a Cheshire cat. And the cat asks Alice, where are you going? And Alice asks, which way should I go? The cat responds, that depends on where you're going. And Alice says, I don't know. The cat says, then it doesn't matter which way you go. See, if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter which path you take. Isn't that right? You need to know where you're at, where you are, and where you are going. Because God has a plan, a track for you, a divine destiny, a divine call. That's why you're still here on this earth. If you had reached your destination, God would have taken you home already. But the very fact that we're still here on this earth, that means that we are still on a journey. That we are still fulfilling or supposed to be fulfilling God's assignment for our lives. God's call for our life. In the Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 533, this is a continuation of the first scripture that I read. The scripture says, then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. So the first part of that scripture says, stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you're about to enter and occupy. So in other words, there is a destination, a place, a place of promise, a place of prosperity, a place of abundance, a place where God wants you to end up. So he's going to rewind the tape, give us instructions by Moses, stay on this track, stay on this path. And if you stay on this track, stay on this path, then you're going to hit your destination. Does it make sense? See, there's a track. And sometimes when we, um, I don't know if you've ever gone shopping. I know wise, you go shopping, right? You ever notice that sometimes when you're going in the mall and you want to find a certain store that you want to go to and you're, unfam you're unfamiliar with the mall itself, so you don't really know where, where that mall is, there's normally a kiosk that is provided in the mall. And so you go to the kiosk and you look on the map and there is a, a dot or a star or something that says, you are here. And then you look for the destination, your store, and then now because you know where you're at, now you can follow the path that leads you to your destination. 
You see how important it is to know where you are and where you want to go. Where do you want to go in your marriage? Where do you want to go in your finances? Where do you want to go in your physical health? Where do you want to go in emotional health? Where do you want to go in life? Where do you want to go with, with your dream? Whatever it is, you need to know where you're at and where you're going. And if you don't know where you are, here's the simple solution. Ask God. Because God knew where Adam was, and let me tell you, he knows where you're at. And if anything, ask, ask Alexa. She'll tell you where you're at. Sometimes you notice that when you don't know where you're at and you're, you're headed down the wrong direction, you, the voice on your phone will say, make a U-turn at the next stop. God is kind of like that. He wants us to be on track with him, right? And sometimes we're on the wrong track. And so sometimes God is going to instruct us to get back on track. See, some people know where they are, but they don't know where they're going. So it doesn't matter what track you take. Isn't that right? So here's what I do. Sometimes in life, do this. Periodically, stop. Ask God, God, am I on the right track Am I going where you want me to go? Because let me tell you, I don't want to end up in a place where God doesn't want me to end up. See, God loves us so much. He wants us to experience more, more than just coming to church, more than, you know, the activities. God wants us to, to live a life of fulfillment, a life of abundance, a deeper fulfillment, a deeper abundance, a deeper joy. That area in your life that is searching for significance in our life. And God has that for us. And that's why God is going to put us on a track so that we can experience where the Bible comes alive in our life. Where the promises are not something that we read, but something that we experience. The abundance of God that we read of the abundance, he wants us to experience that. And so he's going to keep us, he wants to put us on that right track. And he wants us to stay on that track. And in so doing, number two, God will guide you, so keep focused. Moses told the people, you shall observe to do just as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. What he's talking about is keep focused. I think Moses instructed the people of Israel this scripture because we have a propensity to get distracted. We're headed in the direction that God wants us, and all of a sudden, squirrel. And then we get distracted, we get sidetracked, and we start to shift our focus, and all of a sudden, we were headed in the right direction, and now we're shifted to, to walking down the, the wrong track. See, we're still making progression we're still moving forward, but you got to be careful that you can make progress. You can be moving forward, but you're on the wrong track. Are you guys getting this? See, we are all prone in our journey to get distracted and sidetracked. You know, my, uh, my family and I, we like to go to Disneyland, and there's a, uh, there's a ride called the Autopia. The Autopia is a motorized uh, little car, and... So we would go on that, and my, I remember my, my two youngest, when my son was younger, uh, I would let them drive. Because for an adult, it's no fun driving, right? So I would let them drive. The fun part about riding the Autopia is that this car or this motorized vehicle is on a track. And so my sons would be driving, and because they're, you know, they're, they're not skilled in their driving technique, they would oftentimes hit the track, and then it would bump, and they would hit the other side, and it would bump again, and we would have a great time. And you know what? That track is like the Word of God. It keeps us from going over the cliff. It keeps us from going off track. See, sometimes God is going to give us instructions. He's going to give us uh, a command, or he's going to say, do this, don't do this. What, what is that? It's a track. And sometimes as children, we're, we're going to bump against his word and boof, oh, we've got to go back on track, boof, oh, we're going to, don't overcompensate, boof, 
But here's the thing, we're moving forward. And sometimes it's a bumpy ride. Isn't that right? But as you get more mature, you try, you try to mitigate those bumps. And so even though you're on that track, you don't even realize that it's there because now you don't, re, re, you don't really depend on bumping against his word. Are you guys getting that? But you're still on that track. See, God has a way to guide you, but we got to keep focused. How many are still focused with what God wants you to do? Right? Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. And in fact, sometimes as we're traveling to stay on track, he loves us so much that God's going to give us warning signs. So number three, we need to heed warning signs. The Bible says that we must pay the most careful attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. And sometimes these warning signs can be subtle, and sometimes these warning signs can be blatant, like in your face kind of warning signs. I remember when I uh, was dating Lisa, I wanted to uh, make a show of her, and, and I'm more on the romantic side. I like to romance. And so we were in Hawaii at that. We lived in Hawaii, and uh, we decided to go to a friend's uh, beach house on the North Shore side of the island of Oahu. And so Lisa came and picked me up in her car. Hey, hey, let the woman drive. And I wanted to make a show, so I wore my shorts and my muscle shirt and my black Bruce Lee kung fu slip-on shoes. I thought I looked cool. So we go, and we start driving down to the North Shore side. And if you've ever been on the north side of the island of Oahu, it's beautiful. It's green. All you can see is like uh, pineapple fields and sugar cane. And, and then you can see the blue Pacific Ocean. And you can almost smell the salt water as you're, as you're driving with the, with the windows down and the uh, breeze in your hair. And, and I thought, oh, man, this is so good. So romantic as we're driving down, Lisa's driving, and I'm like, ooh. And then this rom romantic part of me came up, and I asked Lisa, hey, because I saw the sugar cane. I said, hey, Lisa, you ever tried sugar cane before? And she said, no. And I said, oh, okay. I am going to give her some sugar cane. So I tell her, hey, um, can you pull over? Pull over on the side of the road because there's all sugar cane. And all you got to do is kind of walk up this this little hill and there's a sugar cane and all I'm going to do is run up, run to the sugar cane, get some and voila. But as we're driving, as, as she's pulling over, there's a huge sign, a warning sign that says no trespassing. Trespassers will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> and I said, never mind, that's okay. Just pull over. It's going to be real fast. There's nobody around. There's no cars. So Lisa pulls over, right, and I get out of the car. I walk up this slight embankment, and all you see is sugar cane. There's, a, there, there, there's this uh, 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 dirt path that's separating, you know, me from the, the sugar cane, and I'm like, there's nobody around. All right. So I go. I'm, I'm headed towards the sugar cane. I step on that dirt path, and all of a sudden, my feet, starts to sink. It starts to sink and sink. And I'm thinking, I cannot get my foot out. I'm thinking, what in the world? What kind of dirt is this? And as I'm sinking now, I'm up to my hips. My nose starts getting closer to that dirt, and it is doo-doo, <laughs> manure. What I did not know was a couple of days before, those guys had irrigated the, that dirt path looking thing, mixed it with manure, and they smoothed it over so the top looked totally solid, but underneath it was like quicksand doodle. <laughs> and so I stepped in there and I started to sink and sink, and all I could think about was OMG, I am going to die in doodle. And on the top of the hill, I could hear Lisa, are you okay? Are you okay? But here's the thing. I am sinking now like quicksand. I grab onto the sugar cane, and with all my might, I said, God, help me. And I 
pull myself out of the doo-doo. I got doo-doo all the way with pebbles, with all kinds, and it, it smelled. And here's the thing. That doo-doo stuff was so uh, powerful that it had sucked my kung fu shoe off. <laughs> so now I have a sugar cane in my hand. My kung fu shoe is stuck in the doo-doo. And I'm thinking, should I get my shoes? I said, no. So here, and as I went down, I had sprained my ankle. So now I have my sugar cane, doo-doo up to my hips, and I'm limping. <laughs> trying to look cool. So Lisa gets into the car, and I'm trying to hide the fact that I have doo-doo all over me. So she gets in the car, I open the passenger door, and I scoot my left cheek inside, trying to hide, right? I get in, I close the door, she starts to take off. As she's driving, she does this. <laughs> what is that smell? I turned to her, I said, I got doodle all the way up my stuff. And being the compassionate woman that she is, she pulls over the side, she said, get out. <laughs> get out. I said, I got doo-doo. She goes, okay, okay, okay. There's a school, like, further down. Let's go to the school and let's get this thing washed up. So we drive to the school. And here's the thing. I sprained my ankle, right? And so I cannot walk. So Lisa tells me on the side of the road, hop on her back. That's how, that's how strong she is. <laughs> now, can you imagine now? I look around. There's nobody there. I hop on her back. With my shuriken in my hand, she starts to piggyback me, and all of a sudden, all these cars start to show up. These guys are sticking their head out of the window going, Woo-hoo, you go, go, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So we get to the school, right? And she does something amazing. We go to the faucet, and she starts to wash all the doo-doo off of me. Yeah, that's how cool my wife is. That's why I married her. <laughs> so, long story short, we go to my friend's place. We're in the car, and I said, okay, I went through all this. I still have the sugar cane. I went through all this, right? I start peeling the thing, thinking, oh, I should get sugar cane. I peel and peel and peel. Nothing. Nothing. What I found out was the sugarcane is not in the leaves. It's in a stalk. All I had was a green part, the leaf. <laughs> Folks, that's why I'm saying heed warning signs. Yeah. Or you're going to end up in doo-doo and end up with nothing. Amen? Amen? Stay on the path. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here's, the, here's what I want you to get. The devil is a master of deception and distraction and if we're not careful we're going to be duped into falling into his deception and distraction and, and and ignore those warning signs and what happens is when we ignore those warning signs we we're going to get sidetracked we're going to come off the track right and then we're going to find ourselves in deep doo-doo because listen you can be moving forward you can be progressing but you got to make sure that you're on the right track, all right? Because you don't want to go in the wrong direction. Now, here's the, here's the thing about what happened to me. I was a Christian, a, a young Christian back then. But what happened was, even though the Spirit of God in, is inside of me, what caused me to go off track was not the Spirit that dwells in me, but the flesh that was in me. So God is going to guide us and God is going to help us, not necessarily by addressing the spirit of God that's inside of you, but he's going to address the flesh that's in you. So in your bullet point, would you write there, addressing the flesh. What gets people off track, what gets people distracted is not necessarily the spirit, it's your flesh. 
It's like these contending forces that are inside of each one. Your spirit wants to do what's right. Your spirit wants to do what God wants you to do. Your spirit wants to please God. It is your flesh that does not want to please God. Your spirit says to forgive. Your flesh says, "Uh uh-uh. Your spirit wants to serve, but your flesh says you're too busy. Your spirit wants to tithe, but your flesh says, I cannot tithe. There is a contending force that is inside of us. And what normally gets us distracted and off track is not your spirit, it is your flesh. So God is going to not address your spirit, he's going to address your flesh. Because the Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Your flesh is like a flat tire on your car on the front side. And we know that when you have a flat tire on the front side, your car will pull towards the flat. In other words, you will have a tendency to pull towards your flesh. And that's why God is going to address the flesh in us. See, it's our fleshly desires that gets in the way. It's our fleshly desires that that sometimes it it pulls us off course. It gets us distracted. Sometimes that that flesh comes in a form of pride or stubbornness or not being teachable or incorrectable or you're simply stubborn and hard head. That's the flesh side. And God knew that in every single person in us, there's a little bit of flesh in every single one of us. And that's why the stuff that you want to do sometimes is very difficult to do because it's the flesh that's contending against what you want to do. Are you guys getting this? Watch this. So God talks to Saul as Saul is walking, right? He's on a journey. Watch this. Watch what God says to Saul. And Saul is also known as the Apostle Paul. He says... Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So here, God is speaking to Paul, right? And Paul, after he's converted, he's Paul. He is reflecting back before he was converted. And he is recounting what he heard from God. And Paul is saying, I heard Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Isn't it interesting that God doesn't address Paul as Paul? Paul, Paul. No, he says, Saul, Saul. What God was doing was, God was addressing the flesh side of Paul, which was Saul. The same thing that happened when Jesus confronts Peter, and he says to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat. Why didn't Jesus say, Peter, Peter? He said, Simon, Simon. Why is that? Because Jesus wasn't addressing Peter, the rock, the converted, the Christian. Jesus was addressing the, the flesh, the Simon, Simon. Because it's that Simon, Simon, the Saul, Saul part that pulls us off track. It's the area that God wants to deal with. It's the fleshy part of our life. That's why sometimes it's so hard sometimes to come to church because your spirit is willing but your flesh is weak. That's why sometimes when there's events around the Las Vegas Strip or whatever, sometimes you your spirit says you need to go to church, but the Saul Saul part, the Simon Simon part, says ah, and it's that fleshy part that gets us distracted and gets us off course. And here's the thing that I learned in navigation: whenever a ship is is traveling on a track, these navigators would warn one degree off 
will turn into 10,000 miles years ahead. You can be traveling and your flesh gets you distracted. Ooh, yeah, I'd rather, okay. It might be one degree, but you go and keep going, making progress and moving forward with just one degree now. One year from now, instead of one degree off, you're a hundred miles off course. Where God wanted you to where you end up began with a choice of one degree. Does it make sense? And that's why God says, stay on track. Keep focus. Listen to me. Listen to warning signs. I'm going to give you warning signs. In fact, even when you're driving, there's warning signs. It might not be a sign, but it might be, you ever drove and then there's these bumps on the road? You're driving and all of a sudden you're dripping. Oh, I got to get off. Sometimes you're like falling asleep and you're like, oh, I got to get off. Right? And so what God's going to do this, he's going to bring people in your life that just like Saul, God says, it is hard to kick against the goads. You know what goads are? Goads are like this long uh, sticks with a pointy end. It's a cattle prod. And so because God loves us so much, he wants us to stay on track, sometimes what happens is if we're one degree off, we start moving this way, God is going to goad us with the pointy end. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we got. Oh, we, oh, 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 oh. Why? To get us back on track. But here sometimes we're so stubborn. Our flesh is so stubborn. We go off track. We're doing something. We're, you know, our attitude or whatever. God goads us. And we go, no, I want to do it my way. I want to go my way. No, I'm going to marry this person. No, I'm going to. And what happens is we are kicking or we're pushing against the gold. And what are we doing? We are committing suicide. Where the, where the gold was to prod, not to stab, but to prod us, the pain prods us back on course, we press against the gold because we want so much. And that's where a lot of folks, we commit spiritual suicide. It's not God. It is our flesh. Are you guys getting this? And that's why sometimes the pain that you feel on the side of your life is not a thorn to your side. It is a gold to your side. Are you guys getting this? Yes. That gold is here to prod you. It's kind of like guard, guardrails, right? When you're driving, there's guardrails. How many of you drive against the guardrails? None of us do. Can you imagine driving and going, I'm going to do my thing. I want to, yeah, I'm going to just driving. <laughs> but that's how some of us, we live. We live pressing ourselves on the guardrails that's separating us from the road, from the cliff. And God says, no, no, stay on track. Why would you want to press against me? Why wouldn't you want to fight against me? And yeah, you're going to get to your desk, but look, you all bust up. You see? So God is saying, listen, I have an abundance for you. I have uh, promises for you. I got blessings for you in, your, in the areas of your life because I formed you. I designed you. I, I, I'm there for you so that you can experience the, uh, the more than the abundance of life that I have for you. But you got to stay on track. And because I want you to stay on track, I'm going to put warning signs. I'm going to um, bring goals to goad you in the right direction. And I'm going to bring people around you that love Jesus and love you in that order. And so here in your last bullet point, would you write, listen to people with godly wisdom. Listen to people with godly wisdom. Watch this. They can help you stay on track. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, 11, the words of wise men are like what? What? Golds. Yeah. They are given by one shepherd. Are you guys getting this? God is going to give you 
people in your life with more spiritual authority, with more spiritual wisdom, I should say, okay? And they love Jesus and they love you in that order. And they're going to come alongside you to help you stay on track. And so sometimes the words that they speak is going to cause a little bit of discomfort. It's going to cause a little bit of pain. Not because they hate you, not because they don't like you, but because they love you. And they love your destiny. And so they're going to prod you. Hey, uh, Kent, that's the wrong attitude. Hey, Kent, that's the wrong perspective. Hey, Kent, you're going in the wrong direction. Stay on track. Ow, 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 ow. And sometimes it's going to be painful, but that pain is going to lead you to the promise. Are you guys getting that? And watch this. The godly wisdom that sometimes you're going to get from these, these men or women that's going to come into your life, where are they getting this wisdom? Here it is. By one shepherd. Who's a shepherd? Big S. It's God. They're not getting it from the world. See, that's why I said, listen to people with godly wisdom. Not people with worldly wisdom, but godly wisdom. Godly wisdom will supersede the worldly wisdom. All right? It will trump the world's wisdom. Too many folks are following people that have worldly wisdom. They have wisdom, but it's worldly. And we need to be a people that will learn to follow godly wisdom. Sometimes it's going to be words of encouragement. Sometimes it's going to be a gold, like, oh, we. But don't allow the enemy to change the pain from a gold, right, to something that you take offense to. Because both offenses and the gold will cause pain. It's how you respond to it, right? Because if you take the offense upon yourself, the Bible says that Jesus could not do any miracles because you took the offense. You see, God is going to bring those people in your life that will speak words of wisdom. They're going to, they're going to empathize with you, but they're also going to hold you accountable. Yeah. Are you guys getting that? Yeah. Okay. Too, t- too many times we want people to empathize. Oh, you, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, wow, I, yeah, okay. But we don't want people to hold us accountable. So we want the, oh, yeah, you can, oh, I'm so sorry. And if you keep ha- only wanting that, that's what the enemy wants. Yeah, love them all the way to hell. Love them all the way to death. Love them. Yeah, go ahead. Empathize. Yeah, empathize. Don't hold them accountable. Are you guys getting this? You see? So wise people will do two things. They'll empathize with you, but they'll also hold you accountable. And the accountability part is going to help you stay on track. I don't know about you, but I want my marriage to stay on track. (laughs) I don't want my marriage to fall off the cliff, right? I don't know about you, but I want my finances to remain on track because I don't want to, you know... uh, go off the cliff in financial areas. I want every area, the wholeness, the sozo of my life, the wholeness of my life, everything in my life to be on track with God. Because when you're on track with God, then you will step into the land that God has promised. Amen to that. You guys receive that? Hallelujah. Would you all stand? Praise God. Simple message. You guys on track? Yeah, all aboard? Are you on board? Yeah? Good. Now, how many of you, if we can be honest, uh, some of us have gone off track? Yeah, oh, right there, right there. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing. In life, this is the reality of life, okay? Because we're human, we are going to sometimes get off track. There's nothing to condemn yourself over. 
Nothing to beat yourself over. No, here's the loving God. When you know that you've gone off track, God has given us a prescription, a remedy to get right back on. It's nothing hard. Here's the, here's the word. Repentance. Isn't that so good? I got distracted, God. My flesh led me. Down. I, I gave it. Just, oh, yeah. Okay, God. Remedy. Repentance. I'm so sorry, God. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me and put me back right on track. There you go. You see how God is? He's not a God that goes, you go off track and poof. Yeah. No, no. God says, no, I want you to be on track. Simon, Simon. Saul, Saul. Repent and come back. And I think that's what we need to do often. Because our emotions, the things of life, distract us. There's, especially here in Las Vegas. Isn't that right? we got so much distractions going on. And that's why we got to be intentionally focused on the things that God wants us to do. And yes, we'll go off. I repent. Come back. I go off. Oh, repent. But here's the thing. I know who I am. I know where I am. And I know where I'm going. And that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen to that. Would you all bow your heads? Hallelujah. Do you guys receive that? Yeah? yeah? Amen. So raise your hands if you've gotten off track someplace. Yeah, just, yeah, just raise your hands, yeah. Okay, good. Now put your hands down. I'm going to pray for you, and then you can silently pray to God yourself. Heavenly Father, you see the hands that were honest before you. They know where they've gotten off track. Whatever the place is in their life that they've gotten off track, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would guide them back on the right track once again. Lord, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And we know that you are a God of grace and mercy, that you know our, our flesh is weak. And so, Lord, we submit our flesh unto you, Lord God, that, Father, that we can be a people that lives by the Spirit, O oh God. That, Father, that we have friends, the wise friends, godly friends around us that can hold us accountable as well as show empathy, Lord, to help us either by a gold or by warning signs or whatever it is, Lord. But we want to fulfill the call of God in our lives. We want to fulfill the, the, the dreams that you have for us. We want to fulfill the assignment that you have for us while here on this earth, Lord God. We don't want to waste time by getting distracted and, and years later find ourselves 100 miles away from where you wanted us to be. And so, Lord, right now, with your gentle Holy Spirit, come and blow your children, blow them, Lord, right back on track, that we may stay on this track, Lord God, and fulfill everything that you have for us to do. And also to experience the abundance, the promise, the blessing, the healing, the peace, the joy. Everything that you have for us. In Jesus' matchless and mighty name. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen? amen. God is good all the time. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. And we'll see you here next week. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next week on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And next Sunday, for you early birds, we are going to be streaming at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and then again at 12 p.m. For more information and to stay connected to our church family, download our New Hope LV app, or you can visit our website at newhopelasvegas.com. May God bless you and God prosper you. We can't wait to see you again. In the meantime, keep hope alive.